I wanted to talk to you about the surprising truth behind the leading cause of climate change. And that's the title of my presentation. And to me, you know, it has been a journey of understanding. Uh, uh, I was born in the 60s. So I was born in 1960. And uh, there was a movie that came out in the 60s called Dr. Strangelove. And so I sort of did a play on that because my name is Dr. Strange Raw, <laughs> or how I learned to stop worrying and love climate change. It's actually not me. It's my granddaughter who helped me with this. My granddaughter was born in 2010. And in, um, when she was born, I was probably one of the most depressed environmentalists on the planet because I thought there was nothing I could do and that we were going to hell in a handbasket. And we are the only species that doesn't belong on Earth. So that was the idea that I had in my mind. And uh, so I came to see her when she was a month old. And you can see her in my arms there. And she looked up at me and she smiled. And she had this very knowing smile. As if she was reading my thoughts. And she was saying, what do you mean I don't belong? I belong exactly as I am. And you're a fool. You haven't understood me. That hit me right away because I had this sensation going up and down my spine, you know, as if I'd seen some, I'd seen something amazing. And uh, I'm a systems engineer, and by, in systems engineering, we know that genuine systems analysis is really not about finding solutions. It's about understanding. It's about understanding the problem. Because once you understand the problem correctly, the solution presents itself. And that's what William Wolfull said it's written in his book. Uh, when he said genuine systems analysis is not about solutions, but it's about wisdom. So let me take you through my uh, understanding of where we are in climate change and why I see climate change as a signal from nature saying you're done with this old phase your infantile phase, and you need to move on. You need to grow up as a species. So that's the message she's sending us. And this is why I see that as a, as a good sign, that someone is looking after us. See, if you look at all the Earth systems, biosphere, geosphere, atmosphere, and hydrosphere, and how we as a species interact with these Earth systems, uh, we have the ethnosphere in the middle. The atmosphere is the sum of all of our thoughts, words, and actions over the past three million years of our existence, all put together. That's the atmosphere. That has been impacting the Earth systems in a way that Earth systems are now out of balance. Okay? So now we now know that we have the, the strength and the ability to actually change the systems of the earth, the biosphere, the geosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, everything, cryosphere, we change, we can change them all. We can change them for the worse or for the better. It's up to us now to choose how we do this. Okay? So if you look at the atmosphere and what we have done over the last 3 million years, and we set the context in time and you know, the gift that my granddaughter gave me was to say, look at it as if you are being used, as opposed to thinking that we are changing something. No, you're not changing anything. <laughs> you're part of nature. Nature is using us. So we are a tool of nature, right? So if you look at it that way, then nature gave us control of fire 500,000 years ago. Okay. So what I'm showing here is the temperature of the earth in white and the CO2 level, the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. So this is a graph. This is like a graph that we draw. You know, we, we draw graphs like this in, in high school, right? So the y-axis represents the CO2 in ppm or the temperature in Fahrenheit on the right side. And the x-axis represents um, the years before present. So that's what they call before BP, year BP, before present. So this means that you know, 400,000 years ago, we were in a warm period. And 450,000 years ago, we were in a cold period. So it was an ice age. So this white line shows us going in and out of the ice age, the Earth going in and out of the ice age. 
And it has been doing that over the last three million years. It's gone through over a hundred ice ages and warm periods in between. Now, if you look further back, before three million years, the CO2 levels in the atmosphere were actually much higher than they are today. So it has been coming down over time, the CO2 levels. And as a result, the temperature had been coming down. And, and then over the last three million years, we've gone through this ice age and, and interglacial period, a warm period in between ice ages. And during that time, the earth spawned us as a species. It spawned us as a species, and then 500,000 years ago, gave us control of fire. And then 50,000 years ago, gave us partnership with wolves or dogs. Okay? They became our dogs, domesticated animals. And the wolves gave us their sense of smell and their sense of hearing. And they helped us detect predators before the predators could catch us and kill us. This allowed human beings to spread out of Africa and go to every corner of the globe in the previous ice age. So that happened about 50,000 years ago. And now we are in the current warm period. Okay? So that started 20,000 years ago. And if you look at the current warm period 20,000 years ago that it started, it looks exactly like the warm period that happened three ice ages ago. It's almost exactly like that. Except instead of going down and down and down back into another ice age, something happened here. And the temperatures kind of stayed up and then went up. And something happened to the CO2 levels as well. The CO2 levels didn't go down, they started going up. So what happened? What happened? is that 10,000 years ago, we started agriculture. We started agriculture, and then we started burning down forests and sending all the carbon that's stored in trees up into the atmosphere as CO2. So this is what I call the Homo sapiens effect. And this is from a book by William Ruddiman in 2014. He wrote this book called Plows, Plagues, and Petroleum, where he showed this curve. This, we showed how the CO2 levels in the atmosphere matched what was happening three ice ages ago until about 6,000 years ago. And then you see it taking off. It went up and it stayed up at 280 parts per million. That is the human effect. The same with the methane. Methane started going up around 5,000, 4,000 years ago. That's from growing rice and from animal agriculture, from the cows. Okay, so the humans essentially heated up the earth. So we heated up the earth. And here's the temperature again from 20,000 years ago. The red line is the temperature. The temperature was below glaciation, glaciation threshold, meaning we were in an ice age 20,000 years ago. And then it came up and up and it went over the glaciation threshold about 10,000 years ago. And that's when we started agriculture. And then it would have gone back down to another ice age 5,000 years ago, except we kept the temperature constant by burning down forests and raising animals. Okay. And so in effect, by the time the industrial revolution began, we had increased the temperature by A, this value A, which is actually greater than B, the increase in temperature that has happened since the industrial era began. So this temperature increase of A was caused by deforestation and animal agriculture starting 8,000 years ago. And the increase in temperature B is caused by both animal agriculture and by burning fossil fuels. And so now we are here today, okay? And we are now here and we are feeling the effect of climate change. And that is nature telling us you're done with heating the planet now you have to start harmonizing and bringing it back to the setting, the thermostat setting, which is here. So you need to bring the temperature back to this and keep it there. And you can now do it by bringing back the forest that you cut and stop raising animals for food. If you did that, because A is greater than B, you can bring it down and you can keep it there. So all the fossil fuel that you put into the atmosphere will still be up in the air. And therefore, the earth will not go back to another ice age. Okay? So that's the, the right approach to harmonizing the climate and healing the climate. 
The other approach is to say, no, 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 no. We are going to continue eating animals. We are going to continue destroying the planet. And then we are going to heat up the planet to a point where the permafrost will just spew out methane like crazy and the earth will go into a Venus syndrome. Venus syndrome, meaning our sister planet Venus, has a surface temperature of 460 degrees Celsius or about 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing lives on that. Okay. It's dead. And we have the potential to either turn the earth into a Venus or we have the potential to heal the earth and bring it back to a harmonized setting and we become the climate harmonizing species of the planet. Those are the two possible futures for us. Now, what is the future that I want for my granddaughter and for my children? It's this green line, not the red line. I'm not interested in the red line anymore. I want to do the green line. So that's the signal that Earth is sending us. So in March 25th of this year, just a couple of weeks ago, a huge chunk of ice the size of Manhattan fell off Antarctica into the ocean. And it did that, it fell off Antarctica because the temperatures in Antarctica were 70 degrees Fahrenheit higher than normal. Think about that, 70 degrees Fahrenheit higher than normal. There is no model that predicts that. There is no model that predicts that. So, I mean, this is outside the realm of what we are imagining could have happened to us. Okay? So now is the time to just acquire some humility. Even for scientists, I'm telling a scientist, acquire some humility. Don't tell us that we can still you know, mess around with nature and tweak it and, you know, and the conquer and subdue nature to shake her to her foundations. This is how Sir Francis Bacon initiated the scientific revolution. Yeah, now we have science and with that, we can now conquer and subdue nature to shake her to her foundations. Guess what? We are a part of nature. You shake nature, you're gonna shake your own teeth in your own skull. So it's time to acquire some humility as a species. That's the message that uh, Mother Nature is sending us. Mm -hmm.